If you have a story to share, want to set up an interview, pick up some cool merch, or find out what else I have to offer, check out MrXDreams.com. That's M-R-X-D-R-E-A-M-S dot com. Hello there, my friends. Got a special treat for you guys today. My beloved, dearest baby sister, also known as West Indy Ray, on YouTube. Check out her YouTube channel while you're listening, if you really want to know what's up. Um, it's nice to see you guys. I must. I'm, I don't know why, but I'm like nervous. I don't know if you guys know this, but her YouTube channel is way bigger than mine. Maybe that's why I'm a little like starstruck right now even Stop. though i see her all the time <laughs> Stop! thank you but, guys yeah she is very pretty just uh, you get that all get that <laughs> off your chest now and uh, i won't tolerate much more of that <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh yeah hello everybody let's see let's see who we got in the chat real quick and um while we're doing this kind of introductory chat stuff because we got some stories for y'all we're not just fooling around today at all by any means um let me know how the volume is uh i'll call you ray how about that yeah that's cool yeah, ray ray's gonna talk and uh make sure that our volume is good i can adjust it so everything sounds clean for you guys and you can hear what we're saying because as you know i'm not i, I don't have a way of connecting two headphones to this thing so i didn't want to have her feel left out she's my little sister so <laughs> I don't, I'm not listening to it right now. You guys are going to have to tell me what's up. All right. So we got, we got Elon, Looney Tunes, Lee Underhill, Cindy, Michael, Marco, Thunderclap. You guys are awesome. First people in there, in the chat there. Mighty mm -hmm. Might, Margbot, what's up? My man, Brad. Let's see who we got. Carla, Linzer. Katrina. Gina. Yeah, Katrina. Where, where's Katrina? Down. What's okay, up, everyone? Okay, man, you, you're like way ahead of me. <laughs> Superbot, uh, yeah, Katrina Lopez, absolutely. And Thank you guys for all the compliments. Zucker. So sweet. What's up? Fitz, my man. I went to high school at Fitz. This guy right here, Shin Fitz. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, Fitz. He's one of, one of the homies from back in the day. Kelly and Minister E.H. What is up, y'all? Uh, let me know if the sound is good. And we will we will keep it moving. Thanks, Elin, for the for the heads up on that. All right. So, what's up, John? Um, we, I've been telling you guys that I come from a family that that has had some paranormal experiences and stuff like that, and I'm about to prove that to you today. I'm not lying when I say that. And uh, my sister here has some stories, including one. So she says that I've never heard. Yeah. I've heard a couple, and if you been following me long enough if you're an old school dreamer you might know that uh hey nightmare files what's up man uh, you might know that uh i did a story where it featured two of the personal stories from my two sisters uh, the other one's not here with us right now unfortunately but uh this we're gonna we might hear some version of that one the shadow people related one or something mm -hmm. like that but yeah you're we're we're going to discuss that and whenever we discuss this type of stuff it always goes pretty deep it's a fun conversation so i figured you know what why don't we uh do this on like for the podcast for the dreamer cast upcoming going to be launching pretty soon here in the next couple of weeks but then i was like yo ray are you you trying to go live with this I'm trying to go live with I it i was like yeah i know you, you're a youtuber so you know what's for up so long yeah you guys I love the YouTube community. I love the fact that you guys are in the chat hyping each other up and like telling each other that you love each other. That's so hype. I find that happens a lot on my um, channel as well. I usually used to talk about more makeup stuff, hair stuff, but I've been getting into the, more of the spirituality, like manifestation practices, crystals. I have a new line of crystal waist beads, stuff like that. So it's really good to be here with my brother right now talking about some of this stuff that we talk about on a daily basis yeah so it's cool yeah there have been so many conversations just 
not wasted, but mm -hmm. you know, just out into the ether, into the atmosphere. Yeah. So we figured maybe share share one of these conversations with you guys. And yeah. if you guys have comments or questions or concerns or anything to add, we'll be checking out the chat as well. So, mm -hmm. excuse me. Yeah. A little, it's they, interesting they, they fed me curry curry <laughs> earlier, so I'm a little uh, might be a little burpy. Yeah, today. it's interesting though, because no matter what I call this guy for. Because we have a really close relationship. I'm the youngest and he's the, old, he's the oldest. And even if I call him for something simple or to check on like the rest of the family and stuff like that, I feel like there's a certain part of the conversation that always goes to this place where we're just like throwing around ideas and talking about experiences that we've had and stuff like that. So it's kind of going to be interesting for me to see how that works and to see if you guys you know it's easy for us to understand each other because we've known each other like my whole life but to see how other people receive it and if it makes sense to other people as well so i'm kind of looking forward to this a lot and i see people have their ears open so that's good john <laughs> exciting <laughs> wait a minute fitz saying that carlton had a crush on ray back in the day Ew. I don't know how you're going to put the man's name out there like that, bro. <laughs> I was little. <laughs> yeah, you Maybe were. Well, he was, sister. he was, he was pretty young too. I mean, oh. yeah, Sheesh. but I don't, I, I was right, very forget young. that. We're not talking, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk move about on from that. that. That's hilarious. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. No clue. All right. So you have, you have some of those, mm -hmm. um, stories in your head right now, yeah. right? All right. So oh. let's. Let's just grab one, and we're, we're going to talk about the the grandpa thing too. Okay. Later. Okay. So. But, so let's not forget about that. The first story. Um, do you want to hear the bigger one first or the smaller one? Let's start with a small one, okay. and we'll discuss it a little bit. Then we'll go to the bigger one. The smaller one. So, and this is something that on my channel I've kind of been getting into more of like personal stuff without being too personal with my life but this one isn't really a big deal um so there was this guy that I was actually talking to and I met him like a few years ago and um like on my birthday and stuff like that and time goes on he like continued to try to talk to me and for a, a while he stopped because he had a girlfriend so when like during this time where he had a girlfriend I didn't hear from him at all and it was really tragic because she ended up passing away so after that like we kind of got back in contact and stuff like that and she came to me in a dream and it was really odd because whenever I see people or they come to me in dreams or in things like that because I I tend to see things like even this time while I've been here at your house like I've seen things in here but it's like thinking back on it it seems like it would be something that's scary but in the moment it's almost like i'm not phased by like it's something that's very normal that happens all the time so mm -hmm. like for instance sometimes i see my neighbors like i want to call it like a the equivalent to like a guardian angel sometimes i see that when i go up into my apartment outside of their door and i just put my key in the door and i go inside and then afterwards i'm like okay so i definitely just saw you know some sort of spirit like i don't want to label it because i don't know exactly what it is but mm. um stuff like that happens to me so in the moment i never feel scared or threatened because i have this belief that you know i haven't really done anything to anybody so why would the spirit be trying to come at me and i always m make it known that i'm a peaceful person and i want my surroundings to remain that way mm. but I had this dream and the girl basically told me that you know she kind of like made it known that she protects him and told me like don't hurt him like don't mess with his feelings and I was just like wow that's crazy but it's not something that I was really shocked about because I know that that happens sometimes I feel like in the spirit realm same time as it happens with our ancestors i feel like they look over us and watch over us and sometimes i can feel the presence mm. of those beings as well so i wasn't really freaked out about it and i wasn't going to say anything to him at first because i didn't want him to first of all think like okay what type of stuff is this girl into and second of all i didn't 
I know that it's a very touchy subject when people are, you know, going through some sort of grief. Because even though it happened, like, maybe a year and a half ago or something like that, it's still something, like, this person is untouchable to him, you know? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be sensitive to that. I ended up telling him, and he didn't seem surprised about it either. But she made it known, like, do not hurt this boy. So at that point, I was just like, you know, I don't want to do anything. I don't even want to, like, jeopardize that and... I just, like, left him alone mm -hmm. after that. But just the way, like, I've never spoken to this person before in my life. I've never seen her before in my life. But the person who came to me after talking to him during that conversation deeper about her, it seemed like she had the same qualities. Like, really sweet girl. The tone of her voice, how he would, like, describe her was the same exact way. It was actually pretty, like... It, it confirmed a lot of things to me that, like, okay, it's not just that you had this dream. It's that you actually connected with this being. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas otherwise, if I didn't have that experience or if he described her in a different way that literally I couldn't see it in my head the same way as I saw it when I had the dream, which also is a completely different topic, but I think that dreams are not necessarily fake. Like, they always say, oh, it was just a dream. I feel like it's a whole alternate reality, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but that's another topic for another time. But oh, yeah. it was, it just confirmed it to me that, okay, this is actually the being that I encountered in my dream. So that's the first story. When you see, when you see what you sort of consider as a being a guardian angel, mm -hmm. like saying, standing in front of someone's door. Mm -hmm what is it that you're actually seeing are you seeing something with your eyes or do you feel like it's something superimposed mm -hmm. by another sense mm -hmm. or what i feel like now that you say like something being superimposed by another sense i feel like sometimes <clears throat> and it changes i don't feel like there's just like one way to see spirits like i feel like it just depends on like what i want to say level for lack of a better term they're on you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. what level of ascension that they're on um, but sometimes I see things with my eyes, which I'll tell you about in a little bit, but the other story that's like really big. And sometimes it's like, I could barely see it. It's very faint with my eyes, but I see like, almost like, I, I want to say outline, but if outline could be 3D, like, you know how holograms mm. and stuff look like when Michael Jackson is like performing live, but it's not Michael Jackson. It's just like a hologram. Yeah, yeah. Michael Jackson. It's like that, but like a very light version of it. And I feel like when I see those things, I get this feeling inside of me that they are very much aware of the fact that I'm there, but they're not really bothered by my presence. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, if I was maybe going to try to do something or cause harm to whatever their job is there, or if I was maybe somebody else who has been problematic in the past or who they have a direct relation to or a direct relation through bloodline to, mm -hmm. I feel like maybe I would feel different, but I haven't encountered any being that has rubbed me that way yet. If that makes sense. No, I, I get it. So are there any like features that you can pick out? I mean, do you see like a humanoid uh -huh. silhouette or a shape or any kind of details about uh -huh. the figure? So sometimes I like, see things and I get to get like a look for a couple seconds but like I said it's always like business as usual to me for some reason like I don't maybe I have to be more conscious of those things when I see them but it's all like oh there's that and then I do what I was doing and then I'm inside of my apartment and I'm like wait but I just mm -hmm. that wasn't like a complete person you know what I'm saying like, yeah, yeah. with my eyes but typically one thing of note is that and especially in the stuff that I've seen recently, like I saw some stuff kind of last night-ish, but not, it's not bad things, you know what I mean? There's just a lot of covering on them, like mm. as if they have on like a lot of clothes, like a lot of baggy clothes, but not so much like these ones that I see casually are not so much like, you know, the typical ghosty looking mm -hmm. people. It's just like a figure with a lot of clothes. I think it's interesting. I, yeah, I think it's so interesting that something so unusual when you think about it after the fact, it's like, wait a minute, that was really weird. Mm -hmm. A lot. I've heard so many stories of people um, seeing weird things, but not reacting to it until after the moment has passed. Mm -hmm. 
and I wonder what it is about those things that that makes that makes that such a common uh, denominator among a lot of these yeah. encounters. Yeah. You know, especially when it comes to spirits and th things like that. Like uh, one of my episodes, one of the first recordings that I did for the podcast was a, a guy who was in California and he was driving along this uh, mountain road and he saw he saw a guy like looking like he was talking on the phone mm -hmm. walking around like angrily in front of their car mm -hmm. and it took them they were walk, watching this and it took them like several seconds of watching it before they realized that the guy was like was disembodied like had no legs yeah. like from the waist down there was like nothing yeah. there mm -hmm. and just seeing seeing that is it's it's i think maybe it's the way the brain works mm -hmm. where it fills in a lot of the information yeah. without actually it takes shortcuts mm -hmm. you know so you might see that and you see okay it's kind of a human shape mm -hmm. so nothing really to see here keep going as usual and then you're like, wait a minute, you retrospectively think mm -hmm. back and, and yeah. see something else. Yeah, that's happened to me several times, even with people like in the physical. Like I remember when I was in middle school, I had a drama teacher who mm -hmm. didn't like he had like two fingers on one of his hands and the rest, the other hand was like completely, you know, quote unquote, like normal, because I don't really want to say that people aren't normal. Mm -hmm. So... I was in class with him for almost a year and I'm very observant when it comes to things, you know, until one day, like towards the end of the school year, we were playing this game where we were throwing a ball around and like you have to say, act something out like mm -hmm. and throw it and give it to. And he caught it with the other hand. And I was like, whoa, like I didn't even mm -hmm. it didn't even occur to me this whole year. And you've been grading my I've been watching you do stuff with your hands. Like, how is it that my brain just like completely yeah, just skip, that skipped over that. Yeah, so I could I could see how that happens, for sure. And for me, it's just I don't know if it was. I kind of thought it was cool because I'm like, is it just that I'm so used to it that I'm looking past these things and not mm -hmm. getting freaked out about it, or that I've accepted the fact that I see these things? Maybe you've been seeing like, it so long. Maybe you've been seeing it all your mm -hmm. life. You know. Yeah. And it's just just now that you're starting to really differentiate mm -hmm. that from yeah. the experience that most people have mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah. And I think, of I think too, I used to see it a lot more when I was younger, like around the time when mommy used to um, actually address the fact that you can see things like that. I feel like yeah. up back, until, back when she used to acknowledge that. Yeah. <laughs> now she's just like, Oh, that stuff doesn't exist or like, Oh, mm. it was just your mind. But before when she used to tell me stories about how she used to see things and things like that. And I would tell her about me and my sister used to see something called the booty all the time. Oh yeah. And yeah. We used to see the butt all the time. And it was You're just You're going to have like, to explain that. <laughs> it was just like from, to my, from what I remember, it was like almost like an animal, like a rodent that mm. we just see like crawling around all the time like that's how it manifested in my eyes like whenever mm -hmm. i saw it but it was something that was not there in the physical basically mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that opens my mind up so much to yeah we think that we see like people who walk around and like ghosts of helen or elizabeth and like all these like people that we think of but there's so there's probably in my head there's so much more to the spiritual realm than just the people who we think weren't able to cross over into the afterlife mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying especially when you get into all the theories about like reincarnation and stuff like that like it oh, that yeah. broadens everything because it's like only the ones who are people are able to do this or the ones who reincarnate into something else you know what i'm saying so mm -hmm. it's just we can go on for for days about yeah, that this is how our itself. conversations yeah. go this is what i'm talking about <laughs> we We'll start one place and we'll end up going all over the map. Yeah. So we're, um, I need to check on something real quick. Y'all give me like one minute. We'll be right back. All right. I'll put on some music for y'all real quick.
All right, y'all. Uh, there's a gremlin in my house somewhere, so I, I had to uh, <laughs> make sure everything was all good. That's so, funny. let's see. We just we explained about the infamous uh, sightings of what you guys called the butt. The butt, yeah. That was that was so weird when I first heard about it. Yeah, uh, a gonna... long time ago too. Like we've been seeing this thing, and what I remember is that my mom didn't even tell us about her stuff first like i had no i thought we were the only ones who saw these things until she told us about how her and her sisters used to see it when they first came to the states and stuff like that too. yeah so you know i'm very conscious of the fact that sometimes things can be put in people's heads and stuff like that but i feel like that was definitely an authentic memory and if i ask my sister she'll like she recalls the same thing too we go through like these these little wars when we're like oh do you remember this do you remember that mm -hmm. like okay and we'll say something and be like where did i get that from so that's something that kind of comes up frequently yeah y'all y'all are pretty good with that uh, to me on especially on the spot if somebody says mm -hmm. oh you, you remember this particular thing from childhood half the time you i know, don't remember i'm not really good at that either i'm i'm good at it sometimes but when it comes to like shows and stuff i'm pretty terrible like, I don't remember any show from childhood besides, like, Sister, Sister. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's pretty much, like, Sister, <laughs> Sister, Hey Arnold, Dexter's Lab. And yeah. that's kind of it, so. Yeah, let me see. Yeah. I'm, I'm checking through the chat right now. We got uh, Swedish Mom, Ray Ayanami, The Shape, Logan, Single Blind Female, Dalbro, Bad Vibes Storytelling. What's up, my friend? and uh aisha or asia I'm, I'm not sure which one it is grandma darkness of course what's up yes my grandma darkness yeah and yeah there we go somebody said something a minute ago regarding your first story oh, somebody said the spirit. booty <laughs> <laughs> yeah the booty that's i don't know what a name for a for a paranormal we literally would just see creature. like for the most part, it was just the butt of the. It gave it, like it gave me cat, rodent like a vibes. Cat like thing. Yeah, or some like type more of like a raccoon thing. type thing. But we'd mostly see just like the back end of it mm -hmm. all the time. I don't know why, but I remember being in the family room when it was the family room that had the doors on it. Yeah. And I Which saw used to be it my like room. around yeah around the cat like around the couch area, and I looked at our other sister and I was like, what the heck. Mm -hmm. and she saw it too i'm like okay so i'm not crazy <laughs> three 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 i'm trying to search through this this chat this chat chat is kind of popping right now i appreciate yeah. that guys i'm glad uh always nice for y'all to build that community aspect uh fork knife sucks she's a cutie Thanks. there you go i i agree <laughs> and i also agree that fortnite sucks uh you can quote me on that the dances suck. Yeah, they're all half of them are stolen anyway. Yeah. All right. Uh, I can't find this thing. If you had a if you had a point or something that I missed or Tariko, what's up, my friend Stargazer? What's up? Hey. Uh, if you guys had a point or something that I missed, or if you're in the oh. chat and I didn't see your name, please uh, shout well, me out on there. Somebody said and, and, uh, that's similar to know. my case. They had a weird color. I remember. What is that comment about? From oh, John. John. Okay, wait. Okay, John. I was in the hospital with, with 104. One when nurses, doctors would talk, open the door, etc., it mm -hmm. would register at, as colors. Uh, you're going to have to explain that. Uh, expound upon that, upon yeah. that sentence there, John. You, are you meaning that whenever they would talk, or like, so any of the sounds that occurred in the space you were in, would uh, you would perceive them as color somehow i could understand that i know yeah. that's that's like a what is it sensory uh i forget what it's called there's a name uh, there's a name for that phenomenon although i don't believe we understand it very well yeah i think it's really crazy too how in my opinion it's like we're so sleep on our gifts our individual gifts that when we try to like box all paranormal into one of like x amount of categories you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying like people who see things 
people who hear things, people, you know, and I feel like we are individuals and everybody has their own gifts that we don't always pay attention to or give credit to. So I completely understand and embrace the idea of me being able to see things a certain way and other people being able to see things maybe like as colors and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, and it's funny real quick, Leanne donation our first super chat for the night thank you so much i appreciate that my friend thank you very nice of you very kind quasar what is up daniela hello there dark warden what's up um uh, it that that kind of is kind of another mini tangent as mm -hmm. well but that really synesthesia thank you Tariko. i appreciate that um the whole idea like what i see as the color blue there's no way for me to confirm mm -hmm. at all yeah. that you see the same mm -hmm. thing when you see what you consider blue. Mm -hmm. You know, even if we can both point at blue, yeah. and, you know, that doesn't mean that my eyes arrange that, you know, arrange the information mm -hmm. from that light reflecting yeah. into them the same way that you do. Because the name of it can still be blue to you, but yeah. it could be what I see as yellow yeah type stuff yeah. yeah or i mean i could mm -hmm. it's the world might look completely different mm -hmm. for each person you know but, but it's yeah. that's just that i'm my I, i'm like starting to blow my own mind over here you know seriously because that's so huge the yeah. implications of that mm -hmm. it's insane yep it just makes you realize how much of like although i feel like we're universally connected in a sense and that's especially once you get into the whole spiritual aspect of it in these bodies were very we have like super independent journeys a lot of times and super independent ways of viewing things mm -hmm. and i feel like it's so good to like play to those strengths and yeah. stuff like that so it's crazy <laughs> it is what a world by the way do not go to west indie ray's instagram why not uh, because they're gonna see. Please you know, go. They're gonna see too much. It's, Please go to West think she's, Ray on If y'all think she's cute now, don't go to West Indy Gray's West Indy Ray's Instagram because she's like way cuter there too. Stop. Somebody <laughs> told me I would look even crazier than this, but somebody told me to put my baby hairs down. So <laughs> here I am. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys are awesome. Thank you yeah, so oh, and if if y'all are if, if you haven't, uh, somebody said they just subbed the shape Aisha. or or at Aisha. Who wait? Who's Aisha? Okay, you subbed to Aisha hey. 1994. Supporting each other. Do you have a channel, Aisha? Let me see what that is. What do you do on your channel? I only see three videos. What what are those? Yeah. Whatever. Well, I'll, I'll 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 check it out later. He subscribed to you. Yeah. We are all connected. Yeah, yeah. psychedelics. That's that's a whole. That's a whole another topic. Yeah, man. We talk about that a lot mm -hmm. amongst each other. Yeah. Uh, if I don't, I'll you speak for myself. One? I haven't gone. I haven't. Uh, Me either. Dealt so. with psychedelics <laughs> personally, but if I mean, if somebody tells me. Hey, Mr. X, you're you're gonna be dead in two months. Mm -hmm. Better believe right. I'm gonna Get do. That so I'll, I'm, I might <laughs> hit up that ayahuasca yeah. and drop drop three stacks on that to go to the the thing for the weekend. You, or whatever. And honestly, you'd probably end up surviving after you did that. If Maybe. you had three months to live, guess what? Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> do you see that? Um, the brain that automatically tries to fill in the blanks of what we don't see. Did you oh see yeah. That comment? Yep. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, perio. I didn't want to try to pronounce it. Peridolia. So <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Through you I'm, that I'm, there. I'm I'm daring. I got the daring in the from in the family. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, you got another story. I do. This one is the craziest story or craziest story. I don't want to say it's crazy because I feel like at that time. I didn't, it was still one of those things. I feel like I've never been quite, you know, that alarmed when it comes to things like this. Mm -hmm. And I don't, like I said before, like, I don't know if that is because I'm so used to it or because like, 
Like, I don't know what the reason for that is, but this is the most vivid, you know, spirit that I've ever seen in my life. So when I was in high school, I used to be in JROTC. Move over here a little bit so that the ad doesn't get in your face. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So I used to be in JROTC when I was younger, and I'm very outdoorsy, so camping, hiking, canoeing, paddleboarding, all that, that's my bag, okay? I love my bag. I'm always in my bag. I just love being outdoors. And I had just come from a camping trip with my, like, JROTC group, and I go in the house, and our parents' house is a very nice size. So one half of it is their stuff, and the other half of it was, like, all the kids' stuff. And by the way, then, my mom built that. Yeah, yeah. She built the house, yeah. and it's pretty. Like, it's pretty bomb. with her bare hands, and, and she and wrote we up helped. the plans of it. Yeah, we had <laughs> she to help. designed it, was it terrible built it, and great at built, the same yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to make just so they they don't think that they just moved into a big house. Yeah, you know, I this. mean, who cares what people think anyway? Yeah, but, but I mean, I want that's like an extra little like yeah thing that I'm proud of. You yeah, know? yeah, so. I get that. <laughs> and like the area of the house is like, I always had a sense that there was a lot of native presence there especially because it's in like you know near like Seminole counties and stuff like that like in re- like the casinos and stuff like that are all over there so I always had a sense that there was a very heavy native presence there and I never felt threatened by that because obviously I've never done anything to you know feel guilty about when it comes to indigenous people and i always show love and respect to indigenous people but i always felt that anyways Mm. i digress so i walk in the house and in the middle of the house is where the family room and all that good stuff is and we had an ottoman and some couches i hope you guys i don't know if this will make Mm. sense on the podcast but there's like an ottoman in the middle and couches on the both sides so we also have another brother at this time i think you were in the military Mm. but we have another brother and he always used to do things to kind of like scare us and pop out of closets and put on scream masks and stuff like that so i see this figure this actual it looked more like a person this time sitting on the ottoman and this color of the skin was like i want to say it was like a a dusty light green color if that makes sense it didn't seem translucent at all or transparent or however you want to say it it just seemed like a person and the details on its face were kind of like it wasn't the skin wasn't smooth and it was wearing all white and i also remember it having like some type of white wrap on its head so this thing is sitting on the ottoman and turns to me looks at me and runs like towards my brother's room so i'm like stop playing like why are you, why are you joking around with me i go to the other side of the room i cut through the other hallway and i'm looking around and his room is right next to mine so I'm looking in the room. I'm calling my brother's name. I'm like, stop playing. If you pop out of here, I'm going to punch you in the face. Like stuff that, you know, 14 year olds say. (laughs) And I looked at my room. He wasn't in my room either. I'm like, stop, stop. Like if you come out of here, I'm going to be pissed at you. Like don't mess with me. So my mom's on the other side of the house and she says to me, who are you yelling at? And I'm like, I'm yelling at, well, Hmm. our brother. I don't, know how yeah Yeah. i'm yelling at my brother i'm like he's playing he's playing around with me and she's like we're the only two in the house and at that point i was like okay because i literally just chased this thing to the other side of the house and when i thought i got to where it was at it wasn't there which you clearly saw i clearly saw it for me to it's not even like yeah several seconds really Mm -hmm. because it's not even like you know it was something that happened real quick and then snapped out of it like it was real enough and in full form enough for me to have chased this thing to another part of the house and had been convinced that it was my actual physical brother who I see all the time. Mm. So it was like really weird. And then I hear the um, garage door the from the garage to the house. I hear that slam and my dad's like, what's going on in here? And I'm like, okay, so also it wasn't my dad because he was outside until just now. And then, like, upon further investigation, I did realize that my brother's car was gone as well. And I don't know whether, like, at that moment I forgot about that or I just assumed that it was in the shop or something. I don't know what I was thinking, but he was definitely not home. And my mom was on the other side of the house. I heard her when she called me and asked me what I was 
And mom's also not green. Yeah, she's also not green. And this <laughs> being was around y'all's height, like at least like a 6'3 mm. height. And it was very lanky. I remember that. It didn't say anything to me. I didn't really hear much. Like no you didn't stomping hear, like, stomp or anything. It, yeah. But how it did was it, just, how did it move? Did it move like it a regular moved like, person or like our brother, like a kid would? Like it just or, moved like a regular person, lanky arms, mm. and our brother's lanky arms, like tall guy. So to me, I just really thought, oh, he's just messing mm. with me. So that was really weird, mm. and it's kind of I have the vision in my head. I wish that you guys can take a look into my mind and actually see what it looks like because. It was really wild and i kind of just over time chalked it up to maybe it's some type of like other spiritual presence or people who used to live here before because there's a common thought that sometimes like when things ha tragically happen or death tragically happens to a being it kind of lingers in that mm -hmm. area so i kind of just chalked it up to that but that is honestly the most clear that I've ever seen. And I've seen things in that house before, but nothing as like, just like really present. Mm. Yeah. So that was the big one, the big story that I had. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. And then one, once you see something like that in your house, it kind of colors the way you feel, but you know, mm -hmm. being in the house for probably the rest of your time there. Mm -hmm. I'm sure by now, you know, this was several years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm sure that that's kind of faded away. But how how long did you did it did it stick with you? Like, did you feel unnerved being in the house after mm -hmm. that? Or so after that, I always felt the presence of things, and I used to see things all the time. I remember one time, our cousin, our oldest cousin, was actually with me, and I was alone for some reason. So she came and stayed the night with me on like Super Bowl Sunday and stuff. And I remember seeing something at that time and I was like, whoa, and I think I mentioned it to her. So it's not uncommon for me to see things, but, and I've always kind of felt a presence there, but I think in recent years, I went to um, Alabama with our aunt and uncle, cause our uncle's from Alabama. And I was saying how creepy and like eerie it is to pass all of, like the cotton fields and places where you know they killed people, people who look like us and mm -hmm. stuff like that and i was like you know it just makes you feel weird like what if something happens out here and my aunt turns to me and she goes why would they do something to you like if anything you're like their baby mm -hmm. and i was like you right so <laughs> i think yeah, it's that's, like that's wise words right there you know and she didn't really think much of it if i brought it up to her she probably wouldn't even remember but that mm -hmm. really touched me and it made me think of things a little bit differently so i feel like once i came to the realization that I'm not trying to hurt you like and i've also never done anything to you it mm -hmm. helped me ease a lot of that in my mind i, my I mind felt about. i know exactly what you mean because i felt that going through like georgia and alabama mm -hmm. when you're when you're driving through especially those areas where there's trees on like both sides of the road mm -hmm. like the there have been beaches. certain areas where i felt this deep like like, man, something bad happened here, man. Yeah. Like when I was a kid, even, you mm -hmm. know, before, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, w I was somewhat aware of some of that stuff, but mm -hmm. I wasn't as aware as like we are now, yeah. where we are today. It wasn't as talked about in, you know, in that little pocket of time frame when, mm -hmm. when we were growing up, mm -hmm. there wasn't like all the rage to have like, you know, roots and stuff on TV yeah. and things like that. But ju just going through there, I always, in certain areas, not everywhere, mm -hmm. but certain areas, I had this feeling like, man, this this place has like a lot of tears in this yeah. the history here. You can feel it, and yeah. I do think too that that also comes along, especially for us, because I know that a lot of people have become like they can't get into that zone as easily, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that for us getting just because of the fact that our family's from the islands too like mm -hmm. especially on our mom's side they're from the islands i feel like that also helps us a lot with our connectivity because we you know over there they're not as influenced by the technologies that we have today 
and the widespread like this isn't real that isn't real i feel like it's mm -hmm. embraced a lot more on that side yeah and to my surprise when i started speaking to my grandma about like my manifestation stories and things that have happened to me especially recently and the way that i feel like you know my ancestors are helping me out and assisting me with things she was so supportive about it and she actually told me like you have the gift i have the gift your grandpa had the gift you have the gift and one of our other cousins our oldest cousin also has the gift and i thought i guess because of the environment that we grew up in and <coughs> how over time like even our parents kind of didn't really give credit to the fact that these things are possible and we could be connected in these ways i didn't expect her to be so open about it mm -hmm. but to my surprise she was just like no nah, you have the gift and i was like well it's crazy yeah yeah it's it's an interesting time in our family right now because especially our grandmother who's now a great grandmother mm -hmm. the matriarch of our family she's more in touch with strange happenings of the world than and i remember her ever being mm -hmm. she's never when i was little i mean because i'm I'm several years older than, than my sister here. And I remember my grandmother growing up, she didn't have time to talk about this stuff mm -hmm. or think about it. Now, I guess now she's retired. She's connected with nature. She's farming and mm -hmm. doing all this stuff. She spends yeah. a lot of time outdoors. I think the farming is that's probably what it is that, doing it, yeah. yeah. And she's, and, but, but here's the thing though, and I'm going to have her on the show. Uh, next time i'm i'm like trying to find out a good portable rig that Did i can do yeah she came what? over a couple of weeks ago and we were out in the in the patio talking me uh, me my grandma and the aunt that you were mentioning uh -huh. that you went to alabama with uh -huh. and it's crazy because my, my grandma me growing up i never heard my grandma talk about this type of stuff mm -hmm. but if you ask her now stuff going back to her childhood yeah that sh that she saw and That's was wild. like this is not normal like she uh -huh. she's known about it her whole life mm -hmm. but it just just never really came up yeah. i guess and uh, yeah i can't wait to do that i gotta get um uh, probably i might get another one of these microphones and i gotta get a little thing that i can plug in to two mm -hmm. microphones portably mm -hmm. and i already have a plan it's just gonna cost yeah. a couple hundred dollars but to get her to get grandma on on that recording talking about all this stuff mm -hmm. and coming out in the open with these stories that she shared mm -hmm. and um uh, and our aunt as well yeah. they got a lot to say and i'm like man it even more because i've always felt like i that we've had this this stuff in our history mm -hmm. and i've always known it because little you know i've heard little tidbits but mm -hmm. the 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 kid gloves are off now yeah. with, with um some For of our sure. family members yeah. and they're they're a lot more open-minded and willing to express a lot of this crazy mm -hmm. stuff that's happened mm -hmm. especially because i think now when you have young like for instance if she were to tell us these things as young children now people they don't really want people telling their kids stuff like that sometimes mm -hmm. but now that we're adults is like what are you gonna do like we're mm -hmm. individuals and she knows that we are at this point in our brains so i feel like that's that's really cool though because she only told me about the two stories about the two sightings that she saw mm -hmm. where she actually you know i don't want to i don't know how much you want to go over with her but she actually saw our grandfather two times after he passed away mm -hmm. yeah and the funny part about that is that he told her because she didn't believe she didn't believe him when he was telling her about the spirit sightings that he's seen in his life and he told her when i die i'm gonna show myself to you if i can and then you're yeah. gonna believe me and then she actually saw it twice mm -hmm. so to me that's crazy i've also had dreams um like of my grandfather when i had to <laughs> the on great joy when i had to release him um and i still feel like he's among us right now but i had to release him from just like a certain part of myself that I was holding on to after he passed away, which is something that, sorry if I'm like being like 
creepy about this, but it's something that still gets a little hard for me to talk about sometimes. But mm -hmm. he just came to me in a very comforting way in a dream one time. And I've had that before. We've also had animal sightings of my grandfather after he passed away, which is like also super weird or mm -hmm. weird to people today sometimes. But to us, it really felt normal. And our a bunch of people from our family was there, but it's not something that, even though at the time we were like, it's crazy, we could feel his spirit, that's him. Now, if I were to be like, hey, you guys, you know, remember that one time we saw grandpa and he was an eagle? They would be like, oh, well, uh, yeah. I don't know about that. But to me, like, I know what it was. <clears throat> I felt it. Yeah. So it's very interesting. That, so if you can real quick explain, well, explain the situation with the bird, the eagle thing. Okay, so. So, well, I'm, yeah. I'll set it up though. Mm -hmm. So uh, about, what was it, 11 years ago now, almost? Maybe. No I think it was like 13. It's two, no, it was 2007, so like 12 years. Yeah. And grandpa died. 12 years ago, grandfather passed away. And um, it was really hard for everybody, you know, that's something that I think about. I think about him all the time. All the time. He's and, on my um, altar at home. Yeah? Yeah, so... Well, I, I I don't have I don't have anything like that, but yeah, mm -hmm. the, the, it's it's still like he's he it's it sticks with me, and it's it's weird because growing up, he you know old school old school Jamaican dude. Mm -hmm. He it, nine times out of ten, if you look at him, he has like he almost looked mad. It was, you know, like new he was like neutral mm -hmm. neutral to a regular person mm -hmm. it just him his face and his body is so hardened from mm -hmm. hard work and mm -hmm. struggling and scraping and working mm -hmm. hard for his whole life it's just he kind of looks kind of mad but mm -hmm. when you get in his presence and you start you know you you say something to him you start yeah. talking to him or you know his face totally lights up uh -huh. and the brightest the yes, to the yeah so yeah he was, his, his <laughs> cheeks would he would smile his cheeks would look mm -hmm. like cupcakes mm -hmm. and such a, a a a great guy fun fun guy mm -hmm. but you know i mean he was strict too yeah uh, he's a old jamaican dude mm -hmm. but he passed away and sh what, what was it a few days afterwards or yeah that you guys that you got because i wasn't there i was mm -hmm. i came to see him when i was in the military and i found out he was he was not doing well so mm -hmm. i was able to come home for like two days just mm -hmm. to see him before yeah. he passed and then i left i went back to to the base that i was at mm -hmm. but what, what happened that the day with the the eagle yeah that was wild because when he passed away it was kind of like a surreal type feeling for a while it didn't it felt like a little bit of denial like oh this just happened oh okay like I cried the first day and after that I just like didn't for a while and I think that that denial is why he came to me in that dream mm. but so what happened with the with the bird thing is that his favorite animal was always eagles if you look at his the desk that was at home the mail cutter had an eagle at the end of it. Mm -hmm. The car had a license plate with the eagle on it. Like above his door, he had an eagle, like a wooden eagle thing, like above his door. Like he just really, really loved eagles and everybody knew this. So in the backyard of the house, um, sometimes we would see not bald eagles, but just like other types of eagles. I, I forgot how we got it confirmed that it was that, but we would see like the adult eagles, whatever. And after he passed away, the guy from down the street, um, Mr. George, he came to cut the grass for my grandma. And it's a really big lawn. So it was shout out to him who has since passed away too for being so good to our family at that time. Like I'll always appreciate that. But he was cutting the grass and he was like, everybody come outside. He's also another person who's an old school Jamaican, has known mm. my grandparents since yeah, they, they lived up. in Jamaica. They, he lived in the house with them when they first moved to the States and all that. And he was like, everybody come outside, come outside. And lo and behold, there's like a baby eagle perched on the corner of the house. 
stayed out there long enough for everybody to come out there. And then once everybody kind of like observed it, like deep breath in and out, like settled on it and kind of talked about the fact that like, that's like, I feel grandpa's presence here. It flew away. And it was like mm-hmm. a baby eagle before we'd see like other ones, like older ones. But that to me was just like a sign that, you know, of his ascension. Could you imagine him becoming an eagle? Like, mm-hmm. not that, I mean, and this is all, this is all, you know, as far as we know, this is all in our, in our minds and in our hearts. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make it any less real, you yeah. know? That doesn't mean it's not legitimate. Mm-hmm. But just entertaining the thought, the idea that someone who, the spirit of an eagle to him represented so much Mm -hmm. for him to pass away and his energy to somehow be transformed Mm -hmm. into that of a young eagle and that creature to live its life with you know containing the essence of a Mm -hmm. man that once loved that bird that you know so much Mm -hmm. it's it's a very interesting thing to think about and i i spoke i did a i wanted to tell the story of the bird the what happened i I made like a short little three minute video the the other yeah the other day Mm -hmm. about uh something that happened and i want to get it onto the podcast somehow so i think this is a good spot for it By the way, hello to everybody who's popped in yeah. or and um good night to everybody who's uh dropped out. I yeah. uh, appreciate you guys hanging out and and listen to this listening to this chat. So, the other day, a couple of weeks ago now, I believe, I um well, actually I'll st- I'll start a couple of months ago, a couple of months back. I went out, I think I was visiting mom and dad. Mm-hmm. And I came home and I noticed there was a um a white, a large white object in my backyard, right in front of the patio door. Open up the door and go outside. It's a dead bird, like a a dove. Mm -hmm. It's dead. And uh, I decide to go and look in my security camera footage. I go back about two days. So it was was basically like right as I was leaving my house, Mm -hmm. this bird showed up. And it was wa- walked around for about uh, like, I don't know if it was 30 minutes or an hour. And you could see on the security camera because there's a camera po- pointed like right near that spot. Mm-hmm. It walks around and then it sits down and gets up, walks around, sits down. And eventually it just puts its head down and never moves again. Mm. And I thought that was odd. I called my neighbor because my neighbor has a pigeon coop and I, I, I assumed that it was one of his doves, you mm-hmm. know, that he, that he has. And I believe it was. So, um, uh, I, night companion, thank you very much for the donation, my oh, friend, thanks. old school dreamer right there. Appreciate that. Um, it's a cool name too. Yeah, he, he's one he's one of the first people that started following me yeah. actually. Yeah. Back way back in the day. Nice. I appreciate the super chats, uh, my friends. Very, very, very nice and kind and generous of you all. Alright, so I I thought that was strange that a bird would show up right there and just, you know, stand around for a few minutes almost like it's waiting for something and mm-hmm. then it dies. Or choose that to be the place to die. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, try to get a little closer. Closer. There. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm no. new to this. <laughs> yeah. No, it's all good. Um, so, a couple a couple months later, which is maybe two two three weeks ago, I'm packing up. I'm closing everything up for the night, and I basically look out my back window, and there's now a small gray and red bird, which I now know, or which I, I figured it was a, a female cardinal. Mm-hmm. I Googled it after the fact and, and it is a female cardinal. I mean, I, I was pretty sure, but I just want to make completely sure. Female cardinal, very small, standing 
in the same spot pretty much where the the dove had landed previously mm -hmm. and i went outside at first you know my first instinct was to grab a broom because i was like okay this bird might be sick mm -hmm. and it might just be i don't know maybe it thinks it's, it's going to get food or something like that mm -hmm. so i kind of like brushed around near the bird and the bird just stood there looking at me mm -hmm. didn't react i was like okay I immediately felt like, all right, I put this broom away and get some gloves on because this bird is about to die. I yeah. just, somehow I knew, I just, I had this feeling. Mm -hmm. And um, I went, I went, put some gloves on. I picked up the bird because I don't, you know, you don't know what, what those things have on them. But I felt obligated to assist somehow. Yeah. I, I I went up to the bird. It was still kind of just looking at me, looking up at me. I picked it up, and I know I remember. Uh, I mean, I've seen people like pet birds before, so I was like, you know what? Maybe maybe it'll like it'll feel comfortable if I kind of just pet its back or something like that. Mm -hmm. I did that for a minute, and at some point, it kind of just like got excited and jumped out of my hand. Mm -hmm. But it fell on the ground and the wings were open. It was just kind of like laying on the ground mm -hmm. and couldn't even put its wings, like close its wings back up. It was very, very uh, sad sight to see. So I picked it back up and I walked over by the, you know, the avocado tree in the back. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of just put it down there on the ground, but I kept my hands like kind of over it to keep it warm. Mm -hmm. And... And I just, I, I, I knew, I knew that this thing was going to die. I knew it was, this was not going to be a long-term solution or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's why I was okay with just interrupting my normal day and going out and doing yeah, this. Yeah, chilling with this bird for like yeah. a long time. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't uh -huh. planning on being there for an hour. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is about to happen. And I, I, I do, I do that. And I'm like kind of just sitting there holding it. And it's just kind of had a seizure. Mm -hmm. Bird has like a seizure and completely stops moving. I'm checking it. I'm looking at it. It's not moving at all. And it's it stopped breathing. And the life is just completely left this, this mm -hmm. poor thing. And, um, oh, another super chat. Thank you very much, guys. You guys uh, are awesome. Y'all are making up for this, um, the lack of of uh, monetization after I got demonetized and remonetized. It hasn't been the same since then. Yeah. yeah I'm not going to complain about that, but you, Can't guys, you guys are, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys, super, super happy, nice content over there on your channel. Yeah, so right? no, no risk of any ridiculous nonsense. Yeah. I guess, but thanks. Thanks for holding me down. My, my dreamers. I appreciate that. So yeah, that's, I eventually, I ended up, um, I did the video like right there cause I was so, I was so, um, struck by this and I, I later buried the bird and can you believe people were, I was in the video. I don't know. If, I, I think you saw the video. Mm -hmm. I mentioned like, um, I don't want to show the dead body of the bird. Yeah. Like you guys, will, you guys will that? probably be believe me. I was like, I was like, I'm going to, I was about to show it, but I was like, you know what? I'm yeah, not I going that. to You're like, never mind. And yeah, no people, I got a couple of people basically saying that oh well now i don't believe you like oh you should have showed it and i'm like if, if you want if you think i should have shown that yeah and, and I, also with the thought in mind that it's possible because i'm a fan of infinite possibilities it's possible that this could be another being that if they were human you know what i'm saying we wouldn't be showing the dead body like that like i'd give it the same yeah. respect as that because you never know yeah, and that, that's opinion. that's how I was. That's how yeah. I was kind of looking at it, and and it just it just didn't seem it just didn't seem like the right the right call. Mm -hmm. And you know, there were a couple of people that were upset about that, but honestly, one one person actually was upset about it, and I I engaged that person. I talked mm -hmm. to them, and we kind of came to a a mutual understanding, mm -hmm. which is always my the the way that I yeah. want to end a conflict. Mm -hmm. But you know, that person was was a was a good example of what how that should work. But honestly, if somebody is not willing to accept the idea that I wouldn't show a, the body of a dead bird that came to me 
or seem the to come to me. The body of a me, dead being, really. Or any, like, yeah, any you know, dead you never creature. Know. Yeah. yeah. Why, 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 why should I show that? Mm -hmm. If you don't agree, then you know, bye. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, <laughs> Google it. That's, yeah, that's how I. Google that's it. How Imagine I feel. it. You know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but then I, I wanted to, I wanted to share. I, don't, I never shared that in an extended form. You know, mm -hmm. the way I wanted to. And you know, some some people told me, and some people told me that, um, you know, the bird might have been scared of me, or or something like that, and I, I might have had a heart attack because I picked it up. I don't, I don't know. I don't it think it so. could be. I, I just had this. I just got this feeling from the whole experience that, yeah. that, this bird was dying, and it yeah. just needed some someone to yeah. pay some attention to it. You for knew. A I feel like I you know. knew from the beginning that that was happening. So it's not like you just grabbed a bird that was trying to get away from you and then it died. Mm -hmm. Like then I would be like, whoa, why'd you kill that bird? But like, yeah. you know, if yeah, you had was, felt that vibe, old. I'd trust it. Yeah, it was so, like you can see, you know, when you see a like a dog, mm -hmm. you can tell by looking at a dog's face mm -hmm. if it's an old dog. Mm -hmm. You know, that it was, it, it, it had this kind of withered, kind of matted look about it yeah you know and it was it was just an old old girl man mm -hmm. and i was like i was like you know I'm, I'm gonna take care of you for a couple minutes and send you on you yeah. know and I, I i felt okay about it but yeah. it was it but i had this earlier earlier on and this is how it relates to the whole grandpa thing earlier on i was cutting the grass and i i ran over one of my own sprinklers like a doofus mm -hmm. <laughs> and so i was fixing it uh -huh. and you know a lot of people if you had to if you if you break a, a sprinkler system or something like that you have to you might have to get somebody to fix that for you but yeah. i was able to fix it myself because i you know that's just how we came up doing stuff like uh -huh. that and i was thinking to myself man if grandpa saw me at my own house that i own mm -hmm. fixing my own stuff he would look at me and smile mm -hmm. and not even say anything yeah. you know that's the way like he wouldn't yeah. he wouldn't actually comment on it he would just look and you would know that he was proud yeah and that you know that i was thinking that and then you know hours later this bird shows up at, yeah. at my house again I, I, was, I don't know if maybe there's no connection there maybe it's just my wishful mind but I just had this deep feeling that that the person, the the bird, the eyes that were looking mm -hmm. at me, they knew me, mm -hmm. you know. And it's I know it's it's hippy dippy and it's and it's it might sound silly, but it's not though. It's, it's like just when people call pe other people um, conspiracy theorists to discredit their argument. It's mm -hmm. the same thing. Like, oh, you're just weird, hippy dippy. Mm -hmm. No, this happened to me. And yeah, that's just what it is. But you know, yeah, it doesn't really it doesn't really help anybody to just try to downplay somebody's experience. Yeah, you know, for sure. That's why all all these people that send me send me, you know, emails and messages about their what they've been through, mm -hmm. their crazy, far out stories of of encounters that they've had with impossible things. Mm -hmm. That's it's not my place to. You know, to some extent, I know if somebody's pulling my leg on purpose, mm -hmm. but if somebody actually, you can tell when someone really believes what they're saying is true. Yeah. And if they do, then it's not my business or nor my place to, yeah. to try to convince them otherwise. I'll ask a question. I'll yeah. say, Hey, do you, you know, you know, it could have been a dream. It could uh -huh. have been sleep paralysis. It could have yeah. been this, it could have been that. Maybe there was just a, you know. Was there a window open? Yeah. Could something else have been the cause of this? Mm -hmm. But there comes a time where it's just like, you know what? You're, you're saying that this is what, what happened to you. I will, I, I'll take you at your word, you mm -hmm. know, and we'll, we'll see, we'll fold that into the realm of possibilities mm -hmm. that exist behind the veil of, of our, of, of what we see in our world, yeah. you know? That's what that's what the dreamer cast is all about, and that's what Mister yeah. X Dreams is all about. A man who knows something knows he knows nothing at all. So with yep. that in mind, it's hard to kind of try to discredit people and say this is impossible because like you you ripped really? that. That's a tongue twister. You know? you, you ripped. I it say right it all there. the time. <laughs> I say it all the time. Yeah. It's honestly my favorite quote. I have other quotes that I like.
but that is my favorite quote. Mm -hmm. That's a good so, one. Yep. Melissa, thank you so much for your super chat donation, my friend. Your pick is cute. You too. guys, you guys are awesome. Yeah, that is. Your <laughs> hair was on pick, point right, right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So we've been on this for an hour and ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Doesn't feel this, like it. Yeah, it doesn't. It we could, like we, we could keep rolling. Like minutes, right? We could, we could keep rolling. I think we're gonna get out of here though for now. Yeah. Make sure y'all hit up my little baby sister West Indy Ray on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. And uh, there's going to be a link in the description of this video if you're watching on YouTube. Mm -hmm. If it's a podcast, West Indie Ray, all one word, mm -hmm. R-A-Y. And you guys can follow some of the amazing stuff that she she is doing on online. Thanks. And uh, maybe, hopefully, one day I'll be as big as her, her channel is. Stop and that'll it. be that'll be sweet. <laughs> but, but, yeah, do you want to say anything? Um, right. not really. I just appreciate everybody who came and watched this. This is my first time actually doing a live. And I appreciate the fact that I've been able to share this with my brother because I am obsessed with my brother. And I think <laughs> he's the greatest thing ever. And I'm just glad to see all the people who also support him too, because I pour out my heart and soul for this guy. But I feel like he's such a person that that's not even enough. So Yo, thunder clap. <laughs> Coming through. Appreciate in it. Clutch. Thank you, my it's friend. It's amazing. But if you guys, of course, if you want to follow me, I've been in my spiritual bag lately, manifestation and like spiritual growth and stuff like that. So I reply to every comment on my channel. So if you guys want to interact with me and stuff like that, even if it's a couple days, sometimes I don't get to it and it's like two days, but I always reply yeah. back. So whatever it is, West Indy Ray. It's W E S T I N D I E R A Y. And I'm also on Instagram and stuff like that too. You guys feel free to message me. So I just appreciate you having me and embracing me and all the great comments and saying that I'm cute and stuff like that. I think you guys are amazing. So I appreciate that. All right, y'all. Well, once again, dreamers, thank you very much for the donations, your generosity. Thank you guys for hanging out and chilling with us, me and my sister, for your um, just always being there. Whenever I pop on, a bunch of y'all show up and show some love. I appreciate that. So you guys are right. We do need a code word on YouTube over here. We do code words at the very end. So if somebody watches all the way to the end of the video, mm -hmm. we can see who it was by them entering a code word into the comment section. Oh. I do I do little unicorn emojis. Oh yeah. Yeah. So okay. I just tell them to drop a unicorn. Also, well, let us that, know if you a, want good to see me on other videos or podcasts. And oh, stuff it's like it's already it's already going down. Yeah. They already they're already they've already been asking for it, That's and awesome. it's about to go down. I got see you. This is my first time having another person in the studio with me, mm -hmm. so. Um, it's it works i got this other microphone you guys can hear us Yay. we're hanging out it's all good in the hood mm -hmm. and this is about it's going to happen again brian's world what is up my man what's uh, up paul, paul thank what's you up? oh, oh, oh my. snap goodness gracious <laughs> i don't know what one. you're excited about you're not going to cut it <laughs> First of all, we might have to split it because y'all no, have we don't showed have a lot of love today. Because I get that shmoney, okay? Oh yeah, yeah. But she makes more than me. I'm gonna let you anyway. have this. I just really <laughs> like the night companion. No, yeah, well, the night companion is nice. Thank you very we much, my it. friend. The original old school <laughs> acolyte of mine. Yes. Uh, you guys are you guys are awesome. Um, what was I about to say? You see, you threw me off. I was about to say something. Yeah, no, we're definitely doing some more talks like this because yeah, this was I'm a blast. That. I, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I, I had a lot of, I had a good time. And, you know, we've been talking to each other for like the past many years. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the, it's, 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 oh yeah, code word, unicorn. Yeah. Since gang, West gang. Indy Ray <laughs> does uh, unicorns for her code words. Mm -hmm. Yes, unicorn, unicorn emojis. Emoji I call them my little the unicorns. Word unicorn. And they, yeah. I love seeing little unicorns. So, unicorn. Yeah. There you go. So, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watch if you're listening to the podcast, don't worry about it. But if you're watching on YouTube, type the word unicorn into your comment mm -hmm. down below so we can see you. Yes. That way we know who's really listening. All right, y'all. 
Thank you so much again. Have a good night. It was very lovely hanging out Have tonight. Have a good night. Yay. Take care. I'm Mr. X, and may your nights be full of dreams. <laughs>